Welcome back to Network Africa. Let's take you over to Cairo where residents have been offered money in exchange for their recyclable garbage. This forms part of efforts to clean the city streets and reduce the huge landfill waste produced in the teeming metropolis of 22 million people. Two kiosks in the historic Cairo neighborhood of Heliopolis began buying cans, bottles, paper and various types of plastic from the public last week. The response has been enthusiastic with local children volunteering to dispose household waste and earn extra pocket money. The idea is simply to give value to garbage, so instead of throwing it out, people can benefit from it, and that helps us keep our streets clean. The project was spearheaded by two members of Egypt's parliament who successfully launched similar initiatives in other cities on a smaller scale. The kiosks compress and sell the material to factories for reuse. The price for each type of recyclable item is posted on a large green sign on the front of the kiosk. A kilogram of aluminium can goes for nine Egyptian pounds. A kilogram of cardboard goes for one pound. They deal with us through this window, where there's a scale and two screens, one on the front for them to see and one in the back for us, and we have set prices for everything. The weight determines the price, and they see the weight, and we have on display the list of prices for everything, and they take the money right away. They don't take coupons or anything. They take the money right away. And despite the low prices, the financial incentive is worthwhile for many in Egypt, where millions live a paycheck from hunger at an established network of informal waste collectors already pick up, sell, or recycle household garbage. <laughs> It's a great initiative because you clean your area for money. The money we get in return gives us an alternative to throwing rubbish out for garbaging men to collect. It's good to make use of it. Authorities will now evaluate the project's success over the coming months with the aim of installing similar kiosks across the capital. Welcome to the Africa Tech segment. According to a research carried out by McKinsey Global Institute, only 16% of Africa's 1 billion people are online. But that share is rising rapidly as mobile networks have rolled out and the cost of internet-capable devices continues to fall. More than 720 million Africans have mobile phones and some 167 million already use the internet. There is a growing wave of innovation as entrepreneurs and large corporations alike launch web-based ventures from e-commerce sites and digital entertainment platforms to mobile health technologies and online educational content. However, the Internet's contribution to Africa's GDP remains low as a result of one factor or the other. Now, to get more on this story, we have been joined by the Google's growth engine and brand lead in sub-Saharan Africa, Bumi Banjo. You're welcome to the program. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon. So, Bumi, what do you think is the cause of slow growth of Africa's Internet GDP? Well, uh, it's a good question. Uh, there are a few things that contribute to it, uh, like you mentioned. Uh, one definitely is the fact that data is expensive, so when people use the Internet, they don't use it as extensively as people in other markets do. Uh, internet penetration is still quite low across Africa, so uh, for the most part, majority of our Internet users um, either don't spend uh, more than a few hours a month online or you know, minutes even sometimes, so that's a big issue. Uh, the other is that a lot of the businesses in Africa are also challenged by a lot of other issues, right? So there's infrastructure structure, uh, there's issues with managing people and all of that. Uh, so there are a lot of things that they have to do on a daily basis that perhaps their counterparts in other parts of the world uh, don't necessarily have to do. However, that said, uh, there, there's a lot of changes happening in the market that make us believe that this uh, is a temporary thing. Uh, in a few years, we expect that the penetration will be significantly higher and the usage also will be higher so that we'll start to see the impact uh, of the web uh, in our businesses. And that's why we're, we're focusing on training now so that we kind of prepare people uh, to take, take uh, you know, advantage of that wave. Now, some people believe that, inquiring, that acquiring digital skills can only be done within major African cities. What can be done to actually extend this training to the rural areas? 
So actually, with the Digital Skills for Africa program, we do try very hard to cover as much of the, the region as possible. So we have training partners uh, that cover 20 plus countries across the continent, uh, and they do offer trainings in cities and towns. Um, at the same time, we do have the portal. So if uh, you know, you're not able to attend training, either because there's none happening next to where you are or close to where you are, uh, you, and if you have internet access, you can actually go online and take the courses online. Uh, what we're now beginning to look at is developing offline kits so that if an individual is in a place that access is either limited or the cost is low, and at the same time they don't have access to our in-person trainings, they can still access the content uh, that's on the internet but without data. And that's something we'll be rolling out in the next couple of months. So looking at gender balance and digital skills, how are the, female, how are the females embracing the training? Are they really showing interest? That's a really good question. You know, more than 50% of businesses uh, across Africa are actually owned or started by women. And when we started this program, it was really important for us to ensure that women were well represented. Uh, of the 1 million people that we've trained so far, 47% of them were women. So women are really interested in this program. And we make sure that when we uh, you know, talk about the program, we're not talking about it in terms of you, know, you have to have a tech background or you have to be uh, someone that has a programming or computer science background. It really is just you have an interest. If you're a business owner, if you're a student, if you're a job seeker, this program is for you. And so that message has resonated with uh, a lot of segments. Now let's look at offline and online digital training. Which of these would you say is more accessed and why is that? Well, so we focus on off offline training for this program. Uh, actually, about 97% of the people that we train were from offline. And the reason we did that was for a lot of people, this is their first major interaction with the web in a way that actually impacts their progress in life. Uh, so not just in terms of entertainment or uh, communication with people, but actually using the web uh, to grow businesses or to find jobs. And we thought the interaction with people was actually critical to this, for that you know, beginning of the journey. And the idea is, if you're in a classroom, you can ask questions of the trainer, you can collaborate with people that you're in the with, uh, form relationships in those classes that you can actually take beyond the classroom and then continue your learning online and so we focused most of our efforts in fact to be honest all our efforts on the offline aspect of the training the portal is there for anyone that cannot access the offline training but we're really focused on ensuring that people have that experience if they want well finally Bumi apart from digital training what else can be done to bring businesses online despite different challenges such as finance power supply and government regulation well, I think in this sector, there are a few things that have kept businesses from doing more online. Uh, devices uh, for a lot of businesses are expensive. Uh, data itself is, ex is expensive, and the access itself in a lot of cases um, over the years were not um, you know, very good. But all those problems are being reduced significantly. So data prices are coming down. Uh, uh, device prices are coming down. Access is significantly improving. Uh, compared to a few years ago, we have a lot more bandwidth available in most of the countries now. And so I think those challenges that kind of related to infrastructure when it comes to the internet are being resolved. The other thing is the know-how. And that's why a huge part of our focus on this program is actually on young people. We have a huge, you know, high, uh, high rate of unemployment amongst young people and we feel that if we train enough young people and they have these skills they can actually help businesses so a business can still focus on running their day-to-day -day and dealing with a lot of the issues that they still need to address to grow their business uh, and still benefit from the web because they can hire someone that okay. has uh, developed these skills well Bumi Banjo, Google's growth engine and brand lead in sub-Saharan Africa thank you so much for joining us on Network Africa And that's our program today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Timmy Tokwe Fagwini.